contract tracing works um, where people are in a confined space that is uh, consistent. So it's easier to track people uh, and uh, who they have in contact with. It's when somebody gets the virus and it's tracing it back to the first person who had it to see who they may have given it to. So I think how it works is just like it's kind of in the name. It makes sure you trace what you've come in contact with, like who you've come in contact with and what classes you were in. And, and it's just kind of to help stop the spread. So if you get COVID or something, they know where you've been and what you've been doing. I think that's what contact tracing is. Well, I believe if somebody gets sick that you are around, then you have to be quarantined and monitor your symptoms, and then you're good. I do. Uh, contact tracing works, so local health departments or state health departments will, uh, if you test positive for COVID-19, they're going to contact you, and they're going to want to know all, all the information about you and where you've been in the past two to three weeks. So contact tracing works. Um, we work in conjunction with the health department. Um, if there is a positive case in one of the buildings, we determine a close contact. So we do the, the contact tracing. We look at that positive case and who that person has been in contact with for 15 minutes within six feet for a 48 hour period. So when that person became sick, um, within that 48 hours of being sick, who were they around for 15 minutes within six feet with or without a mask? And that's cumulative. So if they were sick on Monday and Tuesday and then decided to get tested on Wednesday, whoever they were in contact with on Monday and Tuesday, uh, maybe they, maybe on Monday they had five minutes contact, but on Tuesday they had 15 minutes. So that's 20 minutes total. And so that person is um, considered a close contact. At all the schools, we have uh, assigned seats in the classrooms, and we know who's sitting by who at lunch um, and, and on the buses. And so we can determine who's in that six-foot range because of obviously a class is going to be longer than 15 minutes. So uh, that's how we kind of start to do the contact tracing. And if we have any questions, then we ask our contact tracer at the ha Hamilton County Health Department. Yeah, so the process starts moving pretty quickly. So we've now had a couple of positive cases at the high school and at the junior high. Um, once we've identified those um, close contacts, a building administrator or somebody somebody in the building is going um, to into the classroom, um, finding the student that's been identified as a close contact and pulling them out. The other layer is that we're contacting your parents. So your parents know what's going on. And um, depending on the time of the day, when we're notified of a confirmed case, getting you out of school. So if it's a, if a close contact it's, and it's early in the day, your parent it has to come pick you up so you will stay in that um, area, whether it's the auditorium or a conference room, or, or I'm not sure exactly, each building's a little different. Um, stay there until someone's available to come pick you up. So it's, it's supposed to be 14 full days when you're in quarantine. And I wanna make this very clear, and I'm, I'm so glad that you asked me to be on a video because I really think this piece needs to be explained really well. A lot of times because of fear, it, you hear your kid, your child is on quarantine and immediately uh, parents are going to go and have that child tested the right, you know, right after exposure. And even with a, a what's happening is we're finding a lot of false negatives. So they get tested. They think they're negative and, and, and the, the child and the parent also think, okay, well, they're negative, they're fine. And maybe don't take quarantine as serious. But anytime within that 14 day period, you can become positive. So just because you have a negative test on day two of quarantine does not negate your 14 days of quarantine and the possibility that at some point during that time, you, bec you could become positive. 
Um, yes. So, uh, and I, I need to double, let me double check on this real quick. I'm, I believe the Hamilton County Public Health has to clear you. Um, you have to receive a letter from them saying that it's okay to return. And they typically send that out, um, you know, ahead of that 14 day end period so that you're able to, to come back to school with that, with that notification. Um, yeah, so, so um, and we've seen that, right? Like that is a very, um, a jarring moment and a, and a scary moment for, for students when they find out that they have been a close contact. Um, and beyond that, that 14 days of quarantining, you know, you're, you're at home, you're missing school, you're not allowed to um, go and attend any of the sports um, or clubs, activities that you're involved in. In fact, you're supposed to be staying at home. You know, they're, you're not supposed to be leaving for any reason. Um, so that's hard, right? That's, that's hard for anyone to have to, to st stay at home and not be um, around their, their friends and, and family for 14 days. So we're working through with um, our, you know, Speak Up Babes team at the high school um, and um, Lisa Zelvi, who kind of mentors that group and she oversees a lot of our mental health services in the district for how we um, support those kids when they're out.